Hi, everyone. I'm Lisa Gossels, the Artistic Director of Boston Jewish Film. Thank you for sticking around for this special conversation about The Other Widow with our three esteemed guests. I'd like to welcome Mayan Rip, the director and co-writer of this incredible film, and the immensely talented lead actors, Donna Ivke, whom you'll recognize as Ella, and Anya Buchstein, whom you'll recognize as Natasha. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Lisa, and thank you to the Boston Jewish Film. We're very honored you presented the New England premiere of The Other Widow. Thank you. Hello, Boston. Hi, everyone. Hey so good thank to be here. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It means so much that you're all here to all of us in Boston. Um, first, I just want to put out some major mazel tovs on the glowing acclaim that The Other Widow is receiving, including your nine Ophir or Israeli Oscar nominations for Best Director, Best Movie, Best Actress, Donna Ivgi, Best Supporting Actress, Anya Buchstein, Cinematography, Original Score, Production Design, Costume Design, and Makeup. Richly deserve recognition for your amazing work and also for First Feature from Mayan. That you've worked in the art department in your films really shows in this film, and we'll get to that later. And lucky for us, you're now working on a second fiction film. That's true. That's <laughs> so The Other Widow is one of the most unique movies I've ever seen. And I think I knew from the moment I saw it that we had to show it in this festival. You've created such a fascinating premise and such fascinating character studies in Ella and in Natasha. I appreciated your screenplay and all the artistic and symbolic choices you made, including the dress of tears, what I call the dress of tears and the dream sequences the moth to the flameness of how Donna as Ella is compelled to return again and again to the Shiva, to Natasha. That there's dark humor in the movie works beautifully. I love how naturalistic and raw and emotional the performances are, especially all those scenes with Ella and Natasha that we'll dive into more soon. And I also wanted to note how beautiful and intentionally sparse the musical score is. So much to talk about. <clears throat> Um, I want to start with you, Mayan. I know that was a lot, right? We're going to put that in our CV, everything you just said. <laughs> Thank you. For um, sure. I'd love to start with you, Mayan. Tell us where the inspiration came for, from for this story. Like, what your, what's your writing process? And did you pull it all from your real life um, in, in writing the other um, one? Well, I write in a, a bit of a different way. Usually you write like a, an idea and then a treatment and then the script. And with me, it starts usually with an emotion and with a, an image, like a very strong image. Um, so usually I have like this emotion that leads me to these images. And then I have to like connect the dots and to find the story in them. Uh, so it's kind of like started with this um a forbidden relationship I had with this guy and um, I wrote this whole script script about us um, he had a girlfriend back then and it was like really boring and I decided to kill him mm -hmm. and then it became really interesting because um, and also I made him married um, because where does where does my character go so um, the tear dress was one of my first uh, images and um, and that emotion of of not having a place to put your feelings, you know, so. That's really beautiful. And I think you told me that this script evolved over time. You didn't write this at Khan in the residency with the not Gaffney. This was over years, right? That you worked on this? Yeah, um, I started writing it, um, yeah, maybe even 10 years ago. It took, a, it was a long process. It took maybe a year just to understand the premise of the film. Um, that it's not about their relationship is, but it's about his absence in her life. Mm -hmm. And, um, and yeah, it actually was written a while ago. And then it took a long time to find um, the budget to shoot it. And then there was COVID and then uh, I gave birth in the middle. And uh, so it was a long, longer process, but it takes a long time to write, a, especially a first film, I think. Yeah. Um, so you work with Anya before on your first film. And I want to know, tell us about casting, about Anya and Donna and why you chose Donna to be Ella and Anya to be Natasha and for these women to be counterpoints to each other. Um, it's not like I thought of many options. Actually, the same thing happened with Anya. The first, with the first film we, uh, we did together, when I wrote it, I wanted her eyes 
and I knew she would be amazing. And I didn't have a plan B. So if she would have said no, I would have been in really big trouble. And kind of like here, it was the same thing. I think um, Dana brings something very uh, realistic, very uh, neutral, very um, uh, dirty maybe uh, to the screen. And um, it's something that I really connected to. And I think, um, and I think Anya and Dana, when they both have this, something that's very similar about them when they both enter the room there it's like you you really notice them they're very um strong and noticeable but in a complete uh different way uh so i thought and i, th I thought the two of them together are good um you know uh, they, they give a good fight and also all the scenes between them together they were always like they had like maybe two takes each time uh they were amazing and as we started editing them um like how we started is pretty much how we ended. We didn't we didn't play with it too much during the editing process. It was just like so accurate. They were just putting them in the room together is just it's a bomb, you know. <laughs> um, to Donna and Anya, and you can answer in your own however you wish, but this does feel like an actor's dream of a movie to me, based on all the raw emotion and you know the richness of your characters all you had to mine and also this relationship you got to mine and work on together and I'm curious what was the experience like working for you why did you say yes what was the process like for both of you uh, well uh, I didn't know Mayan uh, before she uh, called me and uh, I read the script and I just loved it and that was it <laughs> And then I saw her film, like a really beautiful uh, Marta Must Fly that she did with Anya. Um, and I loved the film as well, but it doesn't really happen to me a lot that I get a script and I just don't any have anything to say, like anything bad. She said, oh, would you have any comments? Do you have any, listen, it's, I don't know, it's good. I love it. Let's do it. And it was <laughs> as simple as that. And then she told me, I'm thinking of Anya for... Natasha, and I'm like, yes, please, because <laughs> me and Anya, we worked together when we were, I was 23, I think we're the same age, right? Mm -hmm. So when we were uh, almost kids, and we not 23 really, anymore, <laughs> not 23 anymore. <laughs> we're, we're, <laughs> so, so we really, really wanted an opportunity to work together again, because we love each other as friends. And I know how much I admire Anya as an actress and and as a partner. So it was just all very there. And it was like very simple and smooth, like a thing to get into. And like Mayan's world is so full of details. And, you know, even the script that she gave us had uh, Frida Kahlo uh, like printed on them, like two pictures. I should have brought it. I would have shown it to you guys. It's like I had the script with the Frida Kahlo that was actually more dirty, and Anya had like a white Frida Kahlo. And <laughs> <laughs> I still keep script, it. So it's all like, yeah, me too. Like to the smallest details, which is also perfect for actresses because this is what we want. This is what we look for. So, yeah, absolutely. And Anya, what about you? You'd worked with Mayan before, but this was like in 2010 mm -hmm. or earlier. So what was the experience like for you and why did you say yes? How could you? Well, not I fell in love with Mayan for the first time and I I knew how, how talented she was and that she has this special thing that only she does and the way she sees things and I think her cinema is really unique, as you said. And so, uh, and I and I loved Must, Martha Must Fly and I thought she did an amazing job with it. And so I was just waiting for the script for the for the, for her first feature to come. And it, when it came, as Dana said, I loved it as well. And I, I, I loved the tension between these two women. And then she said, Dana, and well, I'm very much in love with Dana as well after working together even more, much more. So for me, it was just a wonderful opportunity to do something as an actress, which I, which I love and enjoy, but also to bond with women 
which is now for me at this point in my life is sometimes even more important than the work itself. It's the bond, it's the connection be you on the set. And and this was really this was special. And I think and I think I, I believe that you can see it on screen. Um it's like a triangle between Mayan, Dana and I. And it connects somehow, and um, and and I'm so happy. I'm I'm really I'm I'm honored to, to be a part of it so much. I'll say that during the rehearsal, um, we didn't rehearse a lot. The rehearsals were more, more technical. Like you go here, you take this from here. You you know it was more technical for the camera work, and we really tried not to put them together in the same room because yeah, like it's like a Jewish couple getting married. You know, you don't want them to be in the same room for a few days. You want them to be so. Marianne, she tried to keep us apart. You know, just stay away, stay Create away, attention. keep the keep the tension. Yeah. But it actually worked. I think it worked. You know, I have so many favorite scenes in this movie. I'm just going to point out two, but I invite you to bring in others. Um, and one is just a favorite scene and one is a scene that I think we can dig into a little. Um, so one of my favorite scenes, uh, basically all of them, but this one is a scene, the tea scene in the kitchen where it's very clear that you... Um, Anna, Don, I know where everything is in that kitchen. Um, and then, of course, that incredible scene where you're both sitting, you know, on Natasha and Asaf's bed. And Donna is first consoling Natasha, but then it turns and your sobs, um, Donna, are louder. And all that happens between you and passes between you. There were so many moments of that building up, but that scene, I was curious, can you talk about that scene and any others that you would enjoy just reflecting on? Who, me? Anya? Um, me? Both of you. Okay, start with Donna and then maybe Anya and then Mayan. Like, yeah. if you want. Yeah. Sure. Um, yeah. Actually, that scene when we're sitting on Asaf's bed was one of the, I think, uh, scenes that we had the most time to shoot because uh, just, I, I think we shot in how long? Well, 16 three days. hours. I think it was three hours. It was uh, actually the light was coming down and yeah. um, the end of the scene we had to shoot in like 10 minutes. I don't know if you remember, but really? had I didn't just remember. That. No, I remember it like. No, it the end, ever. the end when you leave the room. Yeah. Oh, when I leave the room. But, but the bed I'm scene. Just, yeah. Yeah. It was like three hours. It was long. Yeah, it was. I'm, I think it was even I felt it was longer because it was very, you know, there was a a lot of shots and a lot of angles, which we didn't have like as many for the rest of the film because we shot it in a really short amount of time. I don't remember 15 days, how am I on? Well, probably. Uh, 13. Uh, how many days? 13. 13 days. Can you imagine? This don't is try how we make it. cinema in Israel. Don't, no, don't try it. Try it. <laughs> no, don't try it if you, if you don't have like Israelis doing like five things <laughs> at a time. So, uh, so yeah, so I remember us just crying our brains out for like three hours. And at some point, I, I, I think it's gonna be like something that I'll always remember because at first you always have like three takes, I think of like genuinely crying because you see, I'm looking at Anya and it's all emotional and everything that I've prepared and it's all, everything's working. But then what do you do? like? on the eighth time that you have to do it or ninth time that you have to do it. And now this angle and every angle is important. It's like a really important scene. And I remember like just thinking, I don't think I have anything, any more tears left in my in body. Me. <laughs> and yeah. And then, but it was just when uh, the camera was supposed to be like on my side. And I just said, I don't even know what to do. I just feel like a, a sobbing mess. And, and I, I feel like I have nothing left to give this scene. So I just, you know, we're doing the scene, like, like hugging Anya. And suddenly she just starts stroking my back. And I'm like, oh my God. And I start <laughs> crying all over again. So yeah. sometimes it's, you know, those just really little things that that a great partner can do to you when she knows that you just can't cry anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Anya, do you have a favorite scene or, or a challenging moment that well, first you were excited of all, to I, work through? I remember that moment that D Dana just told you about, and it was, that was 
once in a you know it's sometimes this happens it's very rare this moment when you kind of understand it's tough sometimes it's tough when it's so emotional it's tough and you need this you know you need your partner to see you and give you this little kick and uh, it was very mutual this this help we gave each other but I also love the kitchen scene with the knife with the tea and um, I love it because I think this is a comedy this scene it's a comedy scene and I think we both well Mayan obviously gave us this they gave us the the, the this, this direction but I think us doing comedy is what makes the scene so good and so funny and so kind of you sit on the edge of your of, of your seat because you're not sure she knows she mm -hmm. doesn't know and I remember us really like dancing this scene because it had to be very very had to be very accurate technically first she takes the tea. She opens the drawer. I, I take up the na the 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 knife. Everything we had to dance it, and when we, do you remember Dana? We kind of we really put it down technically, and then we relaxed, yeah. and then we made the comedy. I remember there used and, to be uh, like dipping of the boiling tea. You remember that we did it like too many th at the beginning. Like Mayan wanted like. I need to take a sip and then I'm taking a sip and then Anya's taking a sip and then I'm taking another sip. And then we we felt it was too much. Like my aunt says, no, it's like, it's too much, but it's but it too was much. Very, like just looking at each other, sipping like boiling tea. I um, love that you brought up. Oh, sorry, Anya. Yeah. No, no, no. Go, go, go. I love that you brought up the dark humor because that was one of my favorite aspects of the film and I've now seen it. I will have seen it a third time by the time this is happening. I can't wait to experience this with an audience, but on each viewing, you get more and more. And that moment where, you know, the, I don't know if you would call it Pinocchio, you know, with the nosebleeds, why do I think of it as Pinocchio? It's not, it's just the nosebleeds. But when you say the liar, <laughs> maybe that's what I did. The liar. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Um, and when Natasha, you say you better get that checked out, you know, when she's with Asaf's mom, I just thought that was so funny, but even more so on a second viewing. So I love that about the film. I'm very um, happy. Uh, it crossed, you know, sometimes you write things and you're like, it's really about your humor. And you're like, okay, even if no one gets it, it's okay. I mean, this is what I want to do. So, and it's really uh, incredible when people actually get it. It's always surprising, I think, in, you know, in an audience when people laugh, like I, it, it's always, it's, it's a surprise every single time. Um, yeah. Um, I know that's when you really feel an audience is connecting because we don't feel tears, right, necessarily in a theater, but you really feel that. And I think at those points, you probably think, wow, they get it. They get it, um, which is amazing. Um, two last questions. Um, Mayan, I'd love you to talk about your use of music. Like, what's your philosophy there on that? One of my favorite things in this film is, again, that it wasn't overly, there wasn't a bed of music through this. So I could connect with your characters much more deeply and this story, it was so naturalistic. So what's your philosophy and how did you use music? Well, I usually don't use uh, music throughout the whole film. I feel it's a bit like cheating in a way, you know, it's like uh, taking the focus away of the acting or maybe covering um, a story that doesn't work or acting that doesn't work or something like that. So I really like to be as true as possible to my characters and my viewers, uh, but so, um, but still, I think every character in this film has her own music. So it's always, um, it has a reason. Like Natasha is a cellist and she brings this classical world that's very, you know, um, profound, accurate, um, you know, perfect. And Ella brings a more uh, grungier music. Usually her music comes from like uh, when she dreams, when she has all these um uh, mourning is taking over her life and, you know, um, in this hyper-realistic uh, world. So there we put more grungy, like dirty music. And then when Natasha appears in Ella's dreams, 
we used the cello um, and played it backwards in an awkward way. I mean, like between tones or, um, um, you know, in a, in a bad way of playing. And we brought one of the best cellists in Israel, uh, Maya Berzitzman, uh, to play it. She did it amazing, amazingly. And uh, the person who, and I'll just say, uh, Anya practiced a really long time to play those uh, those few oh, chords. God. That, uh, no oh, one, wait, Anya, no one aren't you a classical No, I'm a, pian I'm a classical pianist, but I've never played the cello. And I was so bad at it, so bad. Oh, my God. I can just and say share the the moment when we were shooting that do. scene, and it was like this perfect moment, you know, of like uh, the the camera moves, and it's like a, this dolly shot, and and Anya is sitting there in this like perfect pose, and Ella is looking at her, and everyone is like looking at this beautiful moment, and then her moment comes, and she takes a cello, and it's like eh, eh. <laughs> like, oh, <yeah. laughs> like we all thought it was gonna be this beautiful <laughs> sound. This is acting. This is acting. Oh. This is good exactly. acting. And this I, is good because, because everyone was like exploding on. Then I was crying. It was so beautiful. She I cried. Was, really. Yeah, I was. I was <laughs> and crying I'll from laughter. Say, like I was, <laughs> I was imagining laughter between so many takes. Donna, what about the scene where you? I just want to say that whoever the person that wrote this music is Adam Weingold, and he's an amazing musician, and he's also my husband. So yeah. <laughs> How come you didn't start with that? Like, how do I yeah. make music to my films? Well, it helps when you're taking it for granted. Like yeah, a genius musician. <laughs> so you just tell him, just write the music. And <laughs> um, Donna, what about the scene where you were singing? Was it singing that poem? Like you were singing a song when you got found out, and yeah. I love the violins behind you. And like, what was that like? And I think you're a singer too, because I just saw you in a video, a music video that you wrote yeah. that you're in to the desert. So, yeah, uh, it was uh, it was great. It's actually a song by a very very famous Israeli singer, Rita. If anyone knows her in Boston. And uh, it's uh, it's almost like, a, also like a joke in the film, but when you listen to the words, it's really what Ella's really looking for, just a way to escape everything, all the mess that she's put herself in. And uh, so I love it that, I really loved it that the song that is kind of a joke in the beginning turns to a really emotional moment at the end. And also, I think uh, that we still haven't even decided, like for us, because there was a lot of things that are happening in Ella's head. So, so for me, it was happening in Ella's head, that moment when she sings. But then when she gets the reaction from Natasha, so you're saying, oh, maybe it wasn't really in her head. Maybe that just really happened. And that's all the thing that I love about the film, that you don't really know for sure what really happened and what didn't. And as a musician, it's just really fun to have amazing players behind you just <laughs> coming in and just playing it live. So, so yeah, it was great. That leads me kind of, thank you so much. That leads me to kind of the, the closing question that we probably have to do a little shorter than we might want, but imagine we're having coffee now and really talking about the ending of this film. I love that you brought us there, Donna. We, we came there together. Um, you're wearing red lipstick. I love the scenes on the bike in this movie. And there's some of the white or gray hair. And what do, what do you all want to share about the ending of the movie or what this means or what you want? People should take what they want from your movie. But do you have any last thoughts about this uh, film that you want to share? Who? Me, Mayan. Who? Sure. Yes. Any Mayan? Mayan. Yeah. Well, for me, um, Ella now finds um, now she can bury a stuff in a way. Her secret is out, and that was haunting her. And um, now she can bury him and go on with her life a bit stronger than she was before, and knows herself a bit better than she did before. And um, yeah, and find a better future <laughs> thinking about natasha maybe she's uh... 
what's going on with Natasha? What do you think? Wow. Mm. Natasha and she, Ella. The first sequel. of all, I think Natasha the has the sequel. She she come a couple. No, I, th I think Natasha right. is actually, she, she's in a good place in her life, you know. She, yeah. she, she, maybe she's she traveling. Lost and she's a musician, but maybe she's a... Uh, Maybe she becomes a bit softer. I don't know. Maybe. I'm not sure. What yeah. do you think? Yeah, I hope I hope she's softened up. Yeah, for sure. I think, you know, I think she has a fra um like something broke, you know, in her life, like the perfect life. So now um I think people that had something broken in them are now maybe stronger or more uh true. And um so I think it's a good thing. I will say as a credit to your work that, of course, I think as viewers, we're rooting for Ella a lot, you know, messy as she is, all that emotion. And then I have to say the scenes with Asaf's brother, I found to be so disturbing and yet moving at the same time. Like that scene when she's holding his arm and when he's, he's riding her around her, riding her home and whistling. And then she sees the reflection. She's trying to substitute him. I actually found it very moving as disturbing as it was. Um, but I have to say that I did gain empathy for Natasha. I really did over time. So I do want to say that. So I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Again. Yes. <laughs> for appreciate both. it. Um, and Ella, Donna, do you have any last words? Um, with no pressure, of course. Last words. <laughs> Final words for this conversation. Any last thoughts? Any last thoughts about, uh, you're talking about like the end of the film. Yeah. I think it's a very big relief, I think, for Ella. And uh, sometimes, you know, what I like to take, I like to take things with me, like from every character that I play. And actually, that's how I like to choose the roles I play, because I want them to give me something for my own life. And I want to give them something for me. And because I like changing and I like so I think that Ella really gave me like the ability to look at myself and just kind of not be perfect, not even try, not, you know, just own being the person who sucks and who is the other widow and just to just own it and even you know even like it in the end not that i'm saying that people should you know steal other people's <laughs> husbands but i'm just saying that she's the relief for her is when she can look at herself i think look yourself in the eye and say, yes, I've experienced this. I'm, I have the right to grief as well. I, th I think the world kind of uh, knows that she exists now and recognize her. You know what I mean? She was yeah. like, she, I think she starts the film Ella and she's so repressed and it's almost she doesn't want to be seen. And when she finishes the film, she's really, she's out there, you know. She's putting this red lipstick and and you're wearing a beautiful red shirt now. Just See, acknowledging that. It's yeah, a, and I, I think you were gonna ask that question and I was like And I'm and I'm wearing pink. And this is <laughs> this is not new because Dana and I, through this whole process. We are doing similar things all the time. <laughs> yeah, on purpose. We always wear like the same things for all the premieres and all. <laughs> no, but really, I think Ella finishes this film as a much more stronger and uh, and yeah. standing on her two feet. I think she's ready for like a not married guy now. No, she's, no she's, she's ready to really have her own space. Well, I can't thank you enough, Mayan, Anya, and Donna, for being part of this conversation, for all the insights you just shared, and for continuing to really shine a light in the world with your talent and artistry, all three of you. I love that we're all women here in this call. Um, yeah. It's really cool. And to all who are joining us, 
Thank you. Thank you for staying for this. Um, the 35th annual Boston Jewish Film Festival continues in person through Sunday, October, sorry, November 12th. Um, and then from November 13th to the 15th, we're replaying six films in our virtual festival, including this film, The Other Widow. So please tell your family and friends um, for tickets and more information about our offerings, go to bostonjfilm.org. Uh, and thank you again um, for being with us, our panelists and everybody at the JCC. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Boston. Thank you.